My name is Jared, or as you may know, Junior with Custom Offsets on the YouTube. Um, I am here with my 1993 LS swapped Ford Bronco. So back in the day I had my first vehicle was a 1997 Ford F-150 that I had uh, almost gifted to me from my grandparents and that's kind of what got me into everything. I learned about custom offsets through that and kind of learned about wheels, tires, got into that, obviously started working here about eight years ago and that's when I kind of got my foot in the door with the whole custom world and it just, it opened up a whole new life for me essentially. 2020, starting that off, was going to be a like really promising year. We had just come out of our first big year with Archon and everything like that, had our first shows, went to Daytona for the first time. I had my 1994 Black Bronco previously that I had driven there and back, and that in itself was a huge win, but we had everything going for us and had this whole momentum that coming to 2021, it's a new year, it's going to be awesome, all these cool things are going to happen, and then the world just shut down and ended. Put a halt on everything, but it also kind of gave me an opportunity to then reflect on the Bronco I had and everything I was wanting to do to it, but knew that it wouldn't make sense with the lack of quality uh, in the floorboards and rust throughout. And it kind of got my gears turning then as far as like, hey, there's nothing going on. What a perfect time to get a new build, a new body and start fresh essentially. So when I got this truck, it was relatively spontaneous, just like when I bought the black Bronco two and a half or three years previous. I uh, found this one for sale and a couple others that I kind of started hitting people up about and I was like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna make it happen. There's nothing else going on right now. Why not try and jump out? Um, jumped on Craigslist, was kind of just hopping around some of the main cities. I think I was looking at like Georgia and then like Vegas was one I was looking at. And in Vegas, this one was listed for sale. Um, come to find out that it was actually from Vegas, but for sale in Los Angeles. Kind of knew that this was the one, kind of had a good like gut feeling about it. Um, had him FaceTime me, did a whole walk around of the truck, checked everything out virtually before I decided to commit to flying across the country and driving the thing back home. And um, 48 hours later, I was there in Los Angeles picking this thing up and ready to drive it back home. My build plans for it were very simple. I literally just wanted a new solid body to put the lift kit that I had had and the black Bronco onto. Maybe new wheels and tires, but for the time being, was just gonna take the wheels and tires that were on it, throw it on, and like just start there. In my eyes, these OBS Broncos are kind of like a classic staple right now. It made a lot of sense kind of to have that investment, knowing that I was buying an older vehicle that wasn't two or three grand, and it wasn't gonna hurt me in the long run because I was gonna have it for a long time. So knowing that, I was totally down to fly out somewhere else and pick up a new vehicle and drive it back and kind of check it out. I'd done that about four years previously when I bought my Infiniti. That's something that is fun to me, is kind of adding that to the adventure of all of it. But knowing that I was going somewhere where the vehicle had been in good condition its whole life and hadn't been through Wisconsin winters, that seeing my black Bronco and working on that and knowing what that had, it essentially forced me out of the state to find something that was the other end of the spectrum as far as rust goes. I wanted something that was completely rust free and knew what I had had, wasn't gonna do it, and I wanted to avoid that at all costs. Getting to kind of see California and then driving back through all of that was super cool. Um, got to drive through Utah, through Colorado, all of that, and see a lot of stuff that I've never been to before. Not that I got to spend a lot of time there, but it was very scenic, it was a really cool drive, and it was in a, a new to me Bronco, so it was all very exciting at the same time. So don't get me wrong, the drive back wasn't all puppies and rainbows, even though I would have loved for it to be. Um, there's always gotta be something that throws it off. And long story short, was probably three hours into my drive back home, which is about 32 hours total. Um, had a sign fly up in the road and lodged itself to the front of the grill. I didn't realize it, I just kind of assumed that it had flown back. Um, it hadn't. Uh, lodged itself there. All of a sudden I look down and my heat is like maxed out. Smoke just billowing from under the hood. Pulled over immediately, shut it off. Uh, come to find out that I had hurt the engine pretty badly. Limped it the rest of the way back home. Um, went with no AC for a little while. Had uh, rough idling issues for a while. Finally got it back to come to find out that basically the engine was toast. So um, I've never done engine work before in my life on any of my builds. It's always been cosmetic and aesthetic. And so to jump into something like that performance wise and truly swap out an engine 
I hadn't been foreseeing, I hadn't been planning on, my wallet hadn't been planning on, and I wasn't ready for, but at the same time, it would bring that unique Bronco build, one to the next level, but two also kind of give it that second custom touch. It adds a whole nother aspect to the build that I've never previously had, and I, I don't regret it one bit. So as we kind of realized I needed a new engine and kind of need to look into things like that, uh, it was one of those things where we looked at like, do I just throw another 351 in there? That'll drop right in, plug and play, be good to go, It'll probably have a warranty and be sick. I did a lot of thinking and research to kind of figure out pricing as to what I would end up spending with each of them and what the resulting product would be. Everything I needed, I could piece together through different sites that offered what I needed to literally physically put an LS engine into the Bronco then. Once I'd kind of figured out that the LS was what I wanted to do, one of our shop guys had found a Escalade for sale for parts that I ended up getting a screaming deal on. So we took that LQ9, uh, brought it down to the block, we painted the block itself um, through a stage four cam in it. I basically wanted to go with as aggressive of a pre-built cam as I could. I didn't really want to get into like custom cams and stuff like that. I feel like that would have gotten one, too expensive, and two, to be too much for what I needed. I still want to be daily drivable. It's not a drag truck by any means, so did all the supporting mods for that. Uh, LS7 lifters with that, um, and then I also added uh, Trailblazer SS intake uh, on top of that. Paired that with some long tube headers as well into a Magnaflow muffler. Um, it idles perfectly. It sounds exactly how I was hoping for it to back when I like first kind of started bringing this all together and everything. Uh, paired that behind a 4L80 transmission, wanted to go with the heavier duty one because the 4L60s all seem to just kind of go out over time. It kind of takes everything that I've had in my past and everything that I kind of loved about each of my different builds and puts them all together into one. But I have a 26 by 14 negative 81 Archon Da Vinci's in Chrome. Um, I had to get like one of the first sets. As soon as I saw them, I knew that it was like a step up from the Lincoln. It's basically a split spoke Lincoln, a little bit more showy and everything like that. And I feel like it kind of fit the bill for what I wanted. Um, I'd had 24 14s previously and I wanted to jump up a size and kind of go more rubber band show truck style look with it. So jumped up to 26s, stuck with 35s, stuck with amps, but amp has a 35 13 and a half R26 uh, amp MT then. So that's what I went with as far as tire choice. Um, paired that with, like I was saying before, I have a six inch super lift kit, but I do have the blocks in the rear this time. So uh, on the black truck, I had two inch shorter blocks in the rear, so it did squat a little bit, but with the short wheelbase of the Bronco, it looked like it squatted a lot of bit. Um, now I have the full lift kit in, so it's six inch lift kit front and rear. Past that, I've got cleared out headlights, CP Addicts taillights, and that's about it for right now. I can see it on the ground for the first time with the wheels on, with the spacers, and just that stance that it had and how the wheels actually looked as I backed out and going down the road and stuff like that. It's an indescribable feeling knowing that like I'm literally the one person in the world. It's super exciting just because it's like, you know you've got something good and you know it's gonna blow up and everyone's gonna love it, everyone's gonna be running it, but they all saw it on your truck first. And I think that's kind of the cool thing. And I literally have goosebumps every single day driving it, just knowing knowing what the wheels were, knowing how it looked sitting there and knowing how it sounded and then that it was actually driving too. It was an incredible feeling just being like, damn, I did it. This truck is literally on the road right now on a brand new wheel with an engine that doesn't belong in here and it's driving perfectly fine and I did it. So the whole build has had its ups and downs for sure. It wasn't like, a, yep, got the engine, put it in, all good to go, and it was just flying. There was so many exciting moments, like, oh, sh picked up an Escalade, it runs, it kind of shifts into reverse to get it onto the trailer, like, to then getting it all in and realizing it won't shift into reverse, come to find out the transfer case was in neutral instead of two-wheel drive. So, like, there's a lot of, like, ups and downs that went into all of it, and even getting the engine done and getting everything in and just, knowing that we were gonna try and start it up for the first time and not knowing what it was gonna sound like, if it was gonna sound good, if it was gonna sound like metal on metal. Getting a fuel pump to work and using a, a Ford technology with a Chevy engine is just not meant to go together. So understanding all of that and how to get it to work was a lot of messing around to get it to be turnkey and not have a bunch of switches. Once it's all done and you're driving it around, windows down, music blaring as loud as it goes in a 1993 Bronco with stock radio, uh, like, that end piece is so worth all of it. And when you're looking back at it, sure, it's cool to be like, yeah, man, that sucked. But look at the end result and how cool it was. It's a cool story to tell. I would honestly say my favorite part of this whole build is that it 
it reflects me almost perfectly. It's the builds that I've had in the past that have kind of got it to be here. And then taking all of that then and putting it into this is kind of where I'm at now. So I, I have a 93 Bronco, which is like my 94 that I had had previous. It's got the same engine platform as my Sierra had had. And I want to do a lot of the, the customizing when I was 17 years old and just didn't give a shit what people thought or what Instagram thought. I want to bring some of that stuff and that lighting and that carelessness feel of just building it how I want and not actually building it for an audience and take everything from my previous builds and this will be a direct representation of all of that. And I think that's my favorite part of this is that I've taken everything that I know and love, so to speak, and put it into one build that I can drive around every single day and be like, yep, this, this is it. This has everything that I've ever wanted and everything I've ever had, but all in one.